Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'll be reviewing the new Kai Wheats KETS 02 soldering iron. I recently received the Kai Wheats KETS 02 soldering iron for review, and surprisingly, this is the first soldering iron review I've ever done. Conventional soldering stations typically have the controls and power supply in the base, then a cable running to the iron handle. The KETS 02 isn't like this. It has all the controls in the iron itself, and then it just needs to be connected to a suitable power supply via USB-C. This is very similar to the TS100 soldering iron and the newer TS101, and we'll be doing a few comparisons between the KETS 02 and the TS101 a little later on. To start with, let's see what was in the box. Okay, let's have a look inside. Okay, so we have got a little black and white instruction manual, and it's in multiple languages, so that's the English part there. So only a few pages, but I'm sure that will be enough. And then here we have the soldering iron and we have our tip. Now that is looking very much like a shortened version of a T12 tip. I'll be very interested to know if a standard T12 tip will also go in here. Um, but I think that tightens and oh, I think that has to come off. Yes. That goes through to there. And there, okay. And then we have a little lid as well. That's uh, quite a nice looking unit there, that's for sure. We've got our little protector on there. Ooh, I love taking these off. Yeah. All right, so, okay, very slick looking unit. Uh, we've got our USB-C connector there at the back where it gets its power from. And we've got two buttons here. And we'll just check and see if there's anything else in the box here. This feels like, this does feel like something. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, we've got a little spongy stand, little doohickey thingy. We've got, oh, a, another tip. We've got a power cable, that's a USB-C cable there. And, oh, we've got a whole bunch of tips here. So we've got, oh, that one looks like it's fallen out. It's meant to be in that one there. So we have got all these different types here. The other thing that also did come in the box is this. A little bit banged up, unfortunately, but I'm sure it'll still be fine. This is a 65 watt power supply, USB-C style power supply, like that. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, like that. Now, this is a US plug, but this power supply will accept voltages up to 240 volts. So, all I need to do is stick a little Australian adapter on that, and I'll be able to plug that into uh, our mains power. So, that is our power supply. There is our cable, and there is our soldering iron, and all these tips as well. So, that's what we got. Now, we've got to find out how it performs. For me, there's a checklist of things that are essential for a soldering iron. You might be saying, I don't need a soldering iron that heats up fast. I don't mind waiting. But it's not that simple. While soldering, you may end up working on something that draws all of the heat out of the iron, like a large piece of metal or a big flat plane of copper. When this happens, the iron needs to be able to get back up to temperature quickly for you to continue soldering. So an iron that heats up fast will greatly improve your overall soldering experience, not just the time it takes when you first switch it on. I sometimes solder for hours, so the iron must be light and comfortable to hold. The end of the tip shouldn't be too far away from the handle. The further it is from where you grip, the harder it is to control. After prolonged use, you don't want the heat of the iron to start heating up the handle, making it uncomfortable to hold. Traditionally, soldering stations would have the heater in the handle. A tip would be inserted into the heating element and the heat would transfer to the tip. 
Hakko developed a new type of soldering iron tip that has the heating element inside the tip itself, which means the heat transfer is far more efficient. There is a huge range of T12 tips available and they are usually quite inexpensive. There are also many other brands of inexpensive soldering irons out there that use the T12 tips, not just Hakko. When I'm soldering, I often need to change the tip of the iron part way through a job. For example, I might need a finer tip to get into a hard to reach place. I don't want to have to switch off the iron, wait for it to cool, swap the tip and then wait for it to heat up again and then go through that again to change back. So this is an absolute must for me, though not as important for a casual solderer. This isn't crucial for me because I don't have need to change the settings very often. I generally just punch in the temperature I want and leave it, but it is something that should be taken into consideration with any soldering iron. It's good to have an iron that will either switch off or lower its temperature when not in use. If you happen to walk away from your iron and forget that it's still on, it's good to know that it's not going to be running at full temp the whole time. This is a consideration specific to irons like this, as they have the controls in the handle. If you're left-handed, you don't want to be looking at an upside-down screen. The first thing I noticed about the Ketz 02 is that it looks really nice. It's a little chunky compared to the TS101, but it's still quite light, only 9 grams heavier, and has this nice rubber grip for your fingers. It feels like the body is made from aluminium, whereas the TS101 is just plastic that's painted to look like metal. It also has this nice cover for the tip. If you're going to be throwing this into a toolkit, it's nice to have the tip protected and other things in your toolkit protected from the tip. It has a single USB-C connector at the bottom with an oval indentation. I did notice that some of my USB-C cables are too fat to fit into this indentation, but there was a USB-C cable supplied, so that's not really an issue. The supplied cable is 1.2 meters or four feet in length. It has a 182 by 32 pixel OLED display and left and right control buttons. Removal of the tip involves unscrewing this locking nut and then just pulling out the tip, like this. This tip is a variant of the Hakko T12 tip. It works the same, it's just shorter. I have checked and you can in fact put a standard T12 tip into this iron, but it has to be inserted exactly the right depth and it ends up sticking out way too far to use. Kai Wheats refer to these tips as KAT01, and as far as I can see, Kai Wheats are the only one who sell them. Tips do wear out over time, so availability of replacements is very important. The kit came with five additional tips, a very pointy conical tip, a less pointy conical tip, a large chisel tip, a smaller chisel tip, a large bevel tip, and this smaller bevel tip came installed in the iron. This smaller bevel tip, known as a BC2, is actually my favourite tip to use. The kit also included a 65 watt power supply and a high quality silicon rubber USB-C cable. The cable is a bit fat and bulky, but it feels very high quality and I expect it would last a long time. When you plug in the iron, you'll see this little icon here, which indicates which button to press to start heating the iron. Setting mode. In the non-temperature setting page, press and hold the left and right keys at the same time to enter the setting mode. Screen brightness. In the setting mode, short press the left and right keys to switch to brightness, long press the right key to enter, and the left and right keys adjust, and long press any key to exit. The controls have only two buttons, so making a selection is either done by holding both buttons down or by long pressing one of the buttons. I really wish they had just added a third button, left, right and select. We've all been tuned to this way of thinking since the very first digital devices. This long press, short press stuff just seems unnecessarily convoluted. Reducing the number of buttons has complicated the user experience. So for me, the interface is a bit of a fail. Once again, I'm not sure how much of an issue that is. You'll probably only need to set most stuff up the one time. Things like temperature units and sleep idle time. Then the only control you might need to change is the temperature, and that's very easy to do. Just pressing the left and right buttons will lower or raise the temperature. It's worth mentioning that the TS101 only has two buttons as well, and the interface is just as convoluted. 
Going through the controls, we have screen brightness, temperature calibration, temperature units, sleep time, which is how long the eye needs to be left still before it goes into sleep mode, and sleep temperature, which is the temperature it will drop to while in sleep mode. There's child lock, handheld mode, where you specify if you'll be holding the iron in your left or right hand, and voltage gear. Voltage gear is where you specify the voltage of the power supply you'll be using. If you enter a voltage that is too high for your power supply, you run the risk of it getting upset and tripping over voltage protection. The power supply that comes with the iron is 20 volts, so the iron is set to 20 volts by default. The KETS 02 can run off 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, or 20 volt power supplies. There's really only a couple of settings here I want to change, and that's the sleep time and the sleep temperature. It's set to 20 minutes sleep time by default, and that's a little long for me, so I'll change that to 10 minutes. The iron also has an auto power off if it's left for more than 20 minutes in sleep mode. I've walked away without switching off my iron many times, so it's good to know that it powers down automatically. The tip is about 75mm away from the finger grip, which is about 15mm closer than the TS101, but not quite as close as my Hakko FX951. As I mentioned before, the smaller that distance, the better control you have, so this is definitely a plus for the KETS 02. The next thing I'll do is time how long it takes for the irons to get up to temp. I've found that there is a bit of misreporting of the actual temperature on the irons displays, so I'm going to measure how long it takes to melt this little coil of solder on the tip of the iron. The TS101 melts first at 9 seconds, but only by a whisker compared to the KETS 02 at 12 seconds. The Hakko FX951 brings up the rear at 20 seconds. I used the KETS 02 during one of my live streams, and after a couple of hours of use, the hand grip got quite warm, but not uncomfortably so. I had no problems or issues with it at all during my testing, and it performed beautifully. I did check to see whether it was possible to swap the tips while the iron was hot, and the short answer is no, it's not. Not without some pliers or something to protect your fingers from the heat. This is a bit of a fail for me, but for most people, I accept that this isn't a big deal. In summary, there's a lot to like about this iron. It's a great looking little unit, its case is metal, and has this nice little cap to protect the tip. It uses a variant of the T12 tip, so it heats up nice and quickly. It's compact, comfortable to hold, and comes with a good quality USB cable, even if it is a little bulky. The controls are a little convoluted, but if you're only switching it off and on and changing the temperature, that's not going to bother you. And for most people, that's all they'll be doing. The tip isn't very long, so it's nice and easy to hold steady, but the flip side to that is that it does get quite warm at the handle after prolonged use. Not uncomfortably warm though. You can buy a set of tips from Kai Wheats, but I struggle to find any other vendors selling these KAT01 tips, and no one's selling them individually. For me, soldering iron tips are a bit like drill bits for a drill. They do wear out and need to be replaced. If you know of anyone else selling these tips, please let me know in the comments. I may end up designing and 3D printing adapters to use TS100 or T12 tips with the KETS 02. The left right hand thing is nice to be able to configure, but I think it would have been nicer if this was automatically triggered by an accelerometer. I have these DT71 smart multimeter tweezers that just flip around based on how you hold it. That would have been a nice addition. The KETS 02 has plenty of heating power and gets up to temp nice and quick. You can't safely swap the tips while they're hot, but for most people that's not going to be an issue. So who is this soldering iron best suited for? It's a great iron for the hobbyist or part-time solderer, and if you're someone that needs some portability but still needs decent soldering power, this is a great option. You can pop the cap on, drop the iron, cable and power supply into your toolkit, it doesn't take up much space, and all you need to use it is a mains power socket. 
For me, it's probably not going to replace my current soldering station, but it will become my spare. Plus, I regularly do on-location repairs, so the Ketz O2 will definitely have a permanent place in my toolkit. A big thanks to Kai Wheats for sending me this iron. I did receive it for free, but I haven't been paid for my opinions. If you'd like to buy one, there are links and a discount code in the description. Thanks for watching.